This evening, the Ministry of Education will take comprehensive strategy to address the increased incidence of violence in schools throughout the nation. In Cayuni Mazaruni, the lifeless body of a 25-year-old cook was discovered. The perpetrator admitted to the crime. Woman goes missing after meeting up with a man she met on social media. Her family are looking for any information that could lead to her safe return. In the region, America's summit, Los Angeles meeting focused on clean energy, and internationally, grain export crisis, millions could starve without resolution. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The Ministry of Education will be taking a holistic approach to address the rising incidence of violence in some schools across the country. The approach will see the involvement of the Ghana Police Force, including the Community Policing Group, as well as pastors and other religious leaders in the respective communities. Minister of Education Priya Manikchan made the announcement on Thursday. The decision came in light of teachers at the large secondary school going on strike in protest of gang-related harassment and threats. Minister Manik Chen said, while students need to be educated, their behavior, which affects teachers and other students, will not be accepted. She said teachers, students, parents, and community elders, along with the ministries of health, home affairs, human services and social security, local government, and regional development, will all be engaged to ensure the situation is changed. The education minister also encouraged parents to check on their children and have an idea of what is in their bags, know who they are liming with, know who they are hanging out with, and know what kind of friends they have. For the Lodge Secondary School, Minister Manichan said there would be a PTA meeting where parents of children will be invited. If they fail to attend, the child will not be accepted back into the school before the engagement with their parents. Quote, that does not mean that we will leave them to stray on the streets. That means that we will take them and go to their homes until we find every one of those 338 children's homes and get their parents to understand what is happening in the school, what their role is, and how together we can make their children shine. End of quote. She noted schools with such problems need an entire overhaul. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the discovery of a body of a 25-year-old female at the Kamumbak Dam, Puruni River, in Region 7, Kiyuni Masaruni, on Thursday, June 9th. The dead woman has been identified as Miriam Edwards, also called Mary, a mother of two. Investigations revealed that the woman was a cook in the Bak Dam. On a Wednesday, June 8th, the woman could not be found and clumps of her hair were discovered in the camp. This prompted persons at the camp to become suspicious and launch a search for her. The search party learned that the suspect, Kieran Hope of Boxton, East Coast Amarara, was the last person to be seen with her after sending an elderly guy who resides with her at the camp to get cigarettes for him. He was captured by several Brazilian men who searched him and retrieved the money and gold that he admitted to having stolen from Edwards. It was reported that the men tied Hope up with a rope and began to beat him. He confessed that after sending the man to make his purchase, he was left alone with Edwards. The man said he dragged her by her hair, took her into the bushes, robbed, sexually assaulted her and strangled her before dumping her body into the river. After he committed to the cruel act, the man left the camp to flee to Papi Show Back Dam Landing along the middle Mazaruni River in Region 7. The police were subsequently alerted. Upon their arrival at the camp, the suspect took them to the location where he dumped the woman's body, where it was recovered. The body was transported to a mortuary awaiting a post-mortem examination. Hope is currently in police custody as the investigation is ongoing. A rice farmer from a hiker lost his life after losing control of his vehicle and ending up in a trench. As the Sobers explains. A 25-year-old man is now dead after the vehicle he was driving ended up in the trench at Good Hope Mahaika Access Road, East Coast Narara, on Thursday, June 9th. Dead is Joel Ramlal, a rice farmer of Mahaika, East Coast Narara. Ramla was driving motor pickup PNN 6104 at the time of the incident. Reports are that he was consuming alcohol at his shop in the Mahaik in the company of a friend. 
Around 11.30 p.m., Ram Lal went into his vehicle and drove off at a fast rate of speed. The man lost control of the vehicle and ended up into a nearby trench. He was taken out of the vehicle in an unconscious condition. He was placed into another vehicle and transported to the Mahika Cottage Hospital, where he was seen and examined by a doctor on duty, who pronounced him dead. The body is presently lying at the Jerry's funeral home awaiting a post-mortem. Road users are again being cautioned to use the road in a safe manner. Road accidents accounts for many lost lives and injuries to road users. Citizens are also encouraged to report drivers recklessly driving using the roadways. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Stick around after the break. Woman goes missing after meeting up with a man she met on social media. Her family are looking for any information that could lead to her safe return. And Kanu seized drugs and pistol at Sisters Village. But before that, here's the bridge retraction schedule. At John Lewis Styles, we carry only first quality, men's and women's clothing, footwear, and accessories. As authorized dealers, our items come directly from the manufacturing brands, and are available in all sizes and colors. What we sell was never on display in another store. It's time you know the truth about what you buy. Come visit us on Waterloo Street. John Lewis Styles, Simply different. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. They say. That when it hits you, it hits you. A feeling so strong that it's impossible not to give in to a juicy piece of KFC. To feel elevated by the aroma and to free fall into its exciting flavor. Some call it love, attraction, desire. We call it KFC. Ignite your senses with KFC. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Welcome back. Karen Felix has been missing since Saturday after a simple meetup with a social media friend. Esther Sobers met with the missing woman's family members who are all looking for any information that could lead to her location. Here is more. Please, I beg you, come home. You got three children. A mother of three has gone missing after physically meeting a man for the first time she encountered on social media. 25-year-old Karen Felix has reportedly gone missing since last Saturday, June 4, 2022. Today, Headline News spoke with the sister of the missing woman, Elizabeth Felix, who told us that she accompanied her sister to the man's house in East La Penitence. The last time I saw my sister was on Saturday evening. We both went at a friend of ours. But I leave and went away. She called about half an hour after and tell me um she be leaving just now to come to the park. I told her that I'm about to go to the park from where I was. So I'm going to reach you there. When I reached there, she wasn't there. Try calling her phone. From then to now, no answer. Let's go a bit in details. You said she's going at a friend. Tell us about this friend. 
How was that she visited? It's at um he's living at East Penitence opposite the station. Well, this is the first time I met him. It was the Saturday night and then I met him yesterday after I get the um police to go by his house. But he's claiming that he put her in a vehicle, a yellow wagon, and that would have been like an hour after I leave. The woman's sister subsequently reported the incident to the police. When confronted by authorities, the man said that he had placed the woman in a yellow wagon taxi that was passing by on the road. The police have since reviewed the CCTV camera footage evidence supporting the man's claim, but they could not identify the taxi. We get a footage from the gas station showing us that, yes, indeed, we bring her out, but we didn't get to see if he stopped the car or she stopped the car, but he claimed that she entered the vehicle. And the footage showed that he walked and went home back here alone. What about the taxi driver now? Are there any, um, you're so, trying to get so in contact far, with the taxi driver? So far, the police are saying that it's dark and they can't get to see the number plate properly, but I'm going to go there because I have a lot of business place. I'm going to beg and ask anyone who could show me the footage that I could get the number plate for the car. Did he say, was this a, was this a base car or just a random car he stopped? He said that um, it's just a, like he go out to have a bus, but when he put out the hand, the car stopped. Mm-hmm. Tell us a bit about this individual that's your sister, um, the last person she was seen with. Did your sister know this person? Do you you saying it's the first time you met him? No. Who is this person to your sister? I say it's the first time I met him, but according to him, what he said yesterday that Saturday was the first time he met her too. They do most of the talking, most of the chatting on WhatsApp. And messenger, Facebook, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he said as the first time he meet her, and he ensure that she get a care. You know. Meanwhile, the trouble is just pleading and seeking public help to locate her sister. My sister, we all love you. You know, not just sister, love you to the bone. He's a baby. You come home. You got three children. Eight, six, and four. Every day, every morning they wake up. Auntie, you see, mommy, you come on the road every day for the long as well, looking for you. Please, anybody that might know who my sister is, please, please contact. Any more information on whereabouts of 25 year old Karen Felix is asked to call 690 1765 to contact relatives or 911 or the nearest police station. Felix was last seen wearing a Mal- Mali hairdo, a short blue denim leggings, a short black gray blouse, and a black and brown slippers. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. 53-year-old Daniel Milbourne, the driver accused of hitting and killing construction worker Reynold Williams on the East Coast Public Road on May 23rd and dumping his body, appeared in court today to face charges. Melbourne has been charged with six counts, causing death of Williams by dangerous driving, failure to report an accident, failure to render assistance after an accident, failure to produce vehicle for examination, giving false information to the police, and attempting to obstruct the course of justice. He pleaded not guilty to the charges. He was refused bail on the charges and remanded to jail. On Tuesday, June 7th, police detectives acting on information Seal off and isolated a location near the railway embankment at Collagen where they discovered the decomposing body of Rain Williams. A post-mortem examination determined that Williams died from various injuries sustained in a car collision. Melbourne will return to court on July 22, 2022. The Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit seized a pistol and millions of dollars worth of drugs. 
Dale Sharpies has the details. Ranks of the Customs and Anti-Narcotics Unit was again successful in its efforts to rid the streets of guns and drugs, with the seizure of a pistol and $8 million worth of drugs. Kano officers acting on information conducted an operation at Sisters Village, West Bank Demerara, on June 8th. A subsequent search of the sideline dam led to the discovery of one forty-five caliber pistol with magazine and ammunition. No one was seen in the vicinity at the time officers were searching. Also on June 8th, Kano officers conducted an operation in the vicinity of Hope Bridge, East Coast Demerara, where they attempted to stop a white field wagon with license plate PAB1884. The driver refused to stop, prompting Kanu officers to give chase. The officers pursued the vehicle into Hassington New Scheme, where the driver of the motor vehicle stopped and fled into the nearby bushes. Officers attempted to apprehend the driver but were unsuccessful. A search of the vehicle led to the discovery of several parcels of suspected cannabis. The motor vehicle and the suspected narcotics were transported to Kanu headquarters, where it was tested positive for cannabis. The parcels weighed 39.9 kg with an estimated value of $8 million. Investigations are ongoing. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jarvis. Thanks, Dale. Don't go away after the break. Key takeaways from U.S. Congress hearing on January 6, Capitol riot, and grain export crisis. Millions could starve without resolution. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. When you need money, and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 46 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. The leaders of the US and Brazil have agreed to work together to stop more trees from being cut down in the Amazon. They have been meeting during the summit of the Americas, Al Jazeera's Rob Reynolds reports. At the summit of the Americas, US President Joe Biden has focused in part on global warming and clean energy. Through our efforts to strengthen clean energy economy in the Americas, we're committing to just, not just to energy transition, but to make communities that have been historically marginalized are able to share equally in the gains. The U.S. unveiled a plan to cooperate and help fund Caribbean countries trying to strengthen their vulnerable infrastructure in the face of rising sea levels and more frequent and destructive storms, and to move away from fossil fuel. Our member states um, are heavily dependent on fossil fuels for our energy needs. Another program sets goals for boosting the region's clean, renewable energy sources for electricity. Major economies like Argentina and Brazil have signed on. 
The president of Paraguay spoke for many countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, saying they are suffering from a climate crisis they didn't help to create. Greenhouse gas emissions in Paraguay are low. However, we have suffered greatly and we have suffered the effects over the last few years. This is seen in droughts, floods, fires and crises when it comes to our water resources. We need specific commitments, especially from the countries who bear the most responsibility. Biden is also pushing an initiative aimed at saving what's left of the Amazon rainforest. That could lead to awkward moments during his first one-on-one -on -one meeting with Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, who has encouraged more economic development in Brazil's Amazon basin. As with any gathering of the powerful, protesters also came. A protester demanding protection of abortion rights in the U.S. stepped in front of Biden's motorcade and was tackled by two Secret Service agents and taken into custody. Migrants' rights advocates demonstrated with a message for Biden. You promise solutions. We demand that those solutions come forward. What happens when you have politicians and executives in a room is often that the people that are most directly impacted by their decisions are left out. The number of migrants seeking to enter the U.S. as well as countries like Colombia and Chile has reached record-setting levels this year. On Friday, the summit participants will sign a declaration on migration. But no comprehensive solution to the vast and complex problem is anticipated. Migration is a thorny issue, and dealing with it is made even more difficult by the number of empty seats at the table here. The leaders of Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico, and other countries that are the homelands of many migrants have boycotted this summit. Rob Reynolds, Al Jazeera, Los Angeles. An attempted coup and a brazen attempt to overthrow the government. Strong words were used to describe the last year's Capitol Hill riot at the start of the U.S. congressional hearing. The committee is also investigating Donald Trump's continuing denials that he lost the 2020 presidential elections. Al Jazeera's Heidi Zou Castro reports. We lost the lives. All of the knees came back. This is what police saw on January 6, 2021, when they were overwhelmed by a mob trying to overturn President Donald Trump's election defeat. Capitol Police Officer Carolyn Edward was the first of many officers to be injured. There were officers on the ground, um, you know, they were bleeding, they were throwing up, they were, you know, they had, uh, I mean, I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. While rioters vandalized the Capitol and threatened to kill members of Congress, Trump was watching it all unfold on TV from the White House. According to committee investigators, Trump ignored pleas from advisors and trapped members of Congress to call off the rioters. Aware of the rioters' chance to hang Mike Pence, the president responded with this sentiment, quote, maybe our supporters have the right idea. Mike Pence, quote, deserves it. Committee investigators also argued that a Trump tweet in December was the impetus for far-right groups to plan the insurrection, showing videotaped depositions of rioters confirming their motives. He personally asked for us to come to D.C. that day. And I thought, for everything he's done for us, if this is the only thing he's going to ask of me, I'll do it. All of us here today. Then there was the ongoing effort led by Trump to falsely claim the election had been stolen. The committee showed video of then Attorney General Bill Barr testifying that the claim was in fact a lie. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be a part of it. Investigators say Trump didn't listen, but his daughter, Ivanka, told them she did. I respect Attorney General Barr, um, so I accepted what he said, was saying. According to the committee chairman, taken as a whole, the riot and the efforts to overturn the election was nothing short of a coup attempt, a first in American history. January 6th was the culmination of an attempted coup. A brazen attempt, as one rioter put it shortly after January 6th, to overthrow the government.
Republican leaders in Congress remain the former president's defenders. In fact, it is the most political and least legitimate committee in American history. It has used congressional subpoenas to attack Republicans, violate due process, and infringe on the political speech of private citizens. This was just the explosive beginning to a half dozen more public hearings scheduled for this month. They're promised to feature more testimony from former Trump aides who threatened to resign and believe Trump was too dangerous to lead by himself in the waning days of his presidency. Heidi Jo Castro, Al Jazeera, Washington. And internationally, a deadlock on grain exports from Ukrainian ports is threatening a global food crisis. Black Sea ports have been mined, blocking shipments for weeks, Al Jazeera's Charles Stratford reports. Another truck arrives at this farm in the Kiev region of northern Ukraine. So, the rush is on to empty these silos of last year's harvest of maize to make space for approximately 35,000 tons of winter wheat. But much of this crop may go to waste because of what Ukraine and many countries it exports to say is a Russian sea blockade. At least 20 million tons of grain is already stuck in silos across the country, contributing to rising prices and what the UN says is a growing global food crisis. So this maize is being moved out of the silos in order to make space for the winter wheat harvest that is expected to start in about a month from now. A lot of this maize is being taken to silos elsewhere, but a lot of it will begin its journey to a port in Romania. A journey that can take up to three months and is very complicated indeed. One route takes the grain by train from Kiev into Moldova to avoid a coastal road that Ukraine says Russian forces have shelled. The train then drops back into the Odessa region of Ukraine before being unloaded at the Romanian border onto barges in Rene and Ismail. It then heads down the river Danube to the Romanian Black Sea port of Constanta. Analysts say shortages and long overland export routes have pushed the consumer price of grain up in recent months. Producers have been hit even harder. The cost of transport and logistics has increased 300% since before the war started. We are also looking at ways of getting the grain out via the Baltic Sea and through Hungary, but it can also take up to two months. Before the trucks take the maize away, samples are analyzed at a quality control laboratory on the farm. The grains will be periodically inspected again in the coming weeks because much of it will have to be stored outside silos where rot could set in after only a month. Exporting by train from Ukraine is complicated because the rail track gauge is different in neighboring Poland and Romania. Russian forces withdrew from this area a few weeks ago. This wheat was planted before the war started. Farmers work in the fields of maize and sunflowers despite the danger of mines and unexploded ordnance. It was very difficult because we were sowing during the invasion. Our domestic market is very small. We have to sell it abroad. Russia, which is also a major grain producer, says Western sanctions prevent it from exporting to global markets depriving it of billions of dollars of revenue and making the crisis even worse. Moscow says it is open to a potential Turkish and UN plan to allow safe passage for ships to transport grain from Ukrainian ports across the Black Sea and out to international markets via the Bosphorus. But Russia says Ukraine must demine the sea route first. Ukraine has so far refused, saying it won't leave Ukrainian ports like Odessa exposed to a potential Russian attack from the sea. No agreed solution means Ukraine could lose billions of dollars in revenue, and according to the UN, more countries across Africa and Asia already suffering food shortages could potentially suffer even more. Charles Stratford, Al Jazeera, Kiev. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your three-day weather forecast.
edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. We will be back on Monday at 7 p.m. with another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourselves and each other.